All right, welcome to another part of this very, very long example. In the last video, we figured out how to construct the joint load complete matrix. In this video, we're gonna figure out how to construct the FM or the fixed moment matrix. Now, the fixed moment matrix, um, I'm right here, FM, I, and again, squiggly bracket means it's a column vector. Um, that's gonna be equal to your how can I put this easy? Um, this is going to be equal to your end reactions or your internal end reactions on this um, internal reaction diagram. So this the second diagram that we came up with. And the way we construct this is, let me erase this. Let's start, we start with one element at a time. And again, we have four elements. So what we're going to do is we're going to do... Um, Let's do FM1. And although this, this does mean fixed moment, um, do note that there are going to be a mixture of moments and shears. Okay? So the way we label this for element one is we go back to our old um, sign uh, labeling convention and we go left to right um, for our degrees of freedom and we do rotations first, verticals next, then horizontal. So in the case of element one, which is element one right here, we have, well, if we look back up to our internal or our degree of freedom diagram here, we have element one here, right? And you have a four, one, six, seven. And notice that four and one are moments. Um, they'll, they'll support moments and six and seven are degrees of freedom that'll support uh, vertical shears, right? So what I'm gonna do here on this FM matrix or this column vector is I'm gonna write in order four, one, six, seven. And the first two are moments. So I'm gonna put FM, fixed moment, fixed moment. This is gonna be four, four, one, and then for the shears, I'm going to write FV, right, for fixed shears. Four, one, six, seven. And to figure out what these values are, we look at our internal reaction diagram. And our internal reaction diagram is the second diagram we do, right? So at element one, our degree of uh, freedom four is on the left side, and it's a rotational one and that is a uh, positive 150 right so down here down down here i'm going to write positive 150 fm number 1 our sec our first degree of freedom is here on the right side of element 1 and that's a a, a negative 150 right it's going clockwise i'm going to write a negative 150 here for our fixed shear, 6 is this 33, right? 6, the degree of freedom 6 was here on the left side of element 1. And that's going to be a positive 33. And then on the right side, you have a, another positive 33. Okay? And then we move on to element 2. And that is going to be, if we look back up to the degree of freedom, diagram that we drew, or is it right here? For element two, we have one, two, seven, eight. And these are, the first two are rotational, so they support moments. Uh, the second two are vertical, so they support shears. Not sure why this lags a little bit, but that's all right. So we have, um, we have um, FM2, so we're going to have, right, the first two were moments, can support moments, the second two were shears, and they were labeled 1, 2, 7, 8, okay? We look back to our internal reaction diagram. FM1 was here on the left side of element 2, and that is a positive 54 kip per foot. So positive 54 kip per foot. FM2 was on the right side of element 2, and that was a, a negative 54. And then 
6, or I'm sorry, 7 and 8 were 18 and 18. So I'm going to write 18 and 18 for the shears. And then I need to do two more, right? FM 3 and FM 3 uh, again. FM3 was up here. Element 3, we have uh, a 2, a 3, an 8, and a 9. Rotation, rotation, vertical, vertical. So, down here, I'm going to write um, FM, rotational, rotational, vertical, vertical. V stands for shear, right? And we had um, 2, 3, 8, and 9. And so on our internal reaction diagram for element 3, which is right here, we had um, 2, which was the rotational here on the left, and that was a positive 54. And then on the rotational one on the right, we had a negative 54. So down here, we're going to put uh, a positive 54 and a negative 54, right? Simple enough. So 8 and 9, uh, again, we look at the internal reaction diagram here at 3. We have 18 and 18 uh, for the degree of freedoms 8 and 9. So that's 18 and 18. And then finally, FM. 3, I'm sorry, FM 4, right, 4, uh, we have again FM, FM, FV, FV, and, and the degrees of freedom here, if we look back to our original diagram, um, are 3, 5, 9, and 10. 3, 5, 9, and 10. So 3, ay, ay, ay. Okay. 3, 5, 9, and 10. And if we look at our internal reaction diagram for element 4, we have rotation, rotation, shear, shear. It's a 150 here negative 150 here and then 33 and 33 right so we have a 150 a negative 150 33 and 33 okay so your fixed moment uh, made column vectors are derived from the values are derived from the internal reaction diagram and your joint load values are derived from the joint load diagram right so we actually finished all the matrices we need and in the next couple videos we're gonna use our three equations uh, to figure out what the unrestrained deformations are what the reactions are at all the supports and then internal reactions at each of the elements um, one, two, three, and four. So, see you in the next video.